One of the things I like about researching and writing history, uh, whether it be historical fiction or actual history books, are the unexpected things you discover. It is very common for us to view history only by the lens that it has been presented in. We are familiar, say, with the story of the pilgrims landing on Plymouth Rock, the first Thanksgiving, John and Priscilla Alden, that type of thing. We don't necessarily know about some of the other points of view or some of the other things that were going on. We're familiar with the American Revolution, you know, the Declaration of Independence, Bunker Hill, Lexington and Concord. The United States rose up and addressed British oppression and so on. And you sit and you look and you see that, you know, maybe there was a little more to it than that. But the thing I like is when you're going along and you find something that somebody has totally overlooked or people have forgotten about because they were used to seeing things through that lens that they had always been taught to see it through. And you find a hidden document, which really isn't hidden. It was just forgotten because it's still with everything else. Like one of the things in the town where I grew up, there was always a big to-do about uh, the very first settled minister. It his name was Elder Peleg Hicks. In those days, in order for a town to have a charter, they had to have an official minister. Well, the majority of the people that lived there were Baptists, so they elected a Baptist minister. Some of the others weren't quite so thrilled with it, but that was how it was. And everything was fine for a while. Uh, and he was a very good minister. He helped establish the Baptist Society in Vermont, and he was well-known and respected. And so he was hired, and they considered that a good catch. Well, then, later on, there was a big resentment towards him, and people decided they didn't want him anymore, not as their minister, and even the Baptists didn't want him. And a big petition was set up to have him removed, and so they did, and he didn't even get another pulpit to preach in. And he had to find another way to support him by being, you know, a, a stonemason and a farmer and, and so on. And I could never figure out why. And it was just always glossed over as, well, you know, they, they didn't share his views. Okay, but they kind of knew what his views were because he was a well-known preacher at the time. So when I was actually writing the history of the town of Burke, I found this little reference to something that he had, you know, in, in a biography of him that he had served in this one particular militia during the revolution in a town in southern Vermont. So I started researching that to find out a little bit more about him. And I was kind of doing this not only because he was the first settled minister in my hometown, but he was also like my fifth or sixth great grandfather. So I was working on a biography from my family history. So he belonged to Comfort Stars Regiment in Guilford, Vermont. And that is when it all came together. Guilford, Vermont was a town that when Vermont decided it was going to be independent of the United States, Guilford was going to be independent of Vermont. Vermont wanted to be its own state or country or something, and Guilford wanted to be part of New York. So there was a big clash between the Yorkers and the Green Mountain Boys, to the point where Ethan Allen and Governor Chittenden had to send in the militia to establish martial law because one side, the Yorkers, would always try to disrupt elections and town meetings and anything that the Vermonters were doing, and the Vermonters would do the same thing. And they wanted Guilford to be independent from anything until Congress could weigh in and decide who Vermont belonged to. Well, obviously, it settled that it didn't belong to New York anymore. Vermont became the 14th state, and, you know, everybody went on about their lives, one would think. Well, when it came out that he had supported the Yorkers in the struggle for Vermont independence... That was what did it. They weren't going, You, they wouldn't have been any more opposed to him if he had supported the British during the revolution. And so because of that, because of his politics and views on Vermont statehood rather than his religious opinions as a Baptist minister, 
that was why they got rid of it. And so that one little note, a, a casual reference in his obituary and biography, fulfilled, opened up a whole floodgate of other information and background and everything. So it's little things like that where you find this one bit of information that you decide to explore, you know, and seven to eight out of 10 times, it's a dead end or it just goes right back around to, you know, stuff you already knew. But those other one, three to two times, you will really strike gold. So that's one of the reasons I like poking around in historical records because you never know what you're going to find.